guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to share my top tips for saving money. I've always had a bit of a fascination with money. I love budgeting and saving money. And when I was younger, my granddad used to save all his one piece, two peas, and five peas. I've probably got a bit of it off him, to be honest. I used to save them in a jar. I'd pour out the jar on the carpet and then count all the coins up for him to see how much he had. At birthdays and Christmas, I always used to love saving up all the money. I wouldn't often spend it. I just like to see it increase, increase, and increase. I have always been quite careful with money because at the end of the day I want to keep as much as possible as I can in my pocket rather than giving it to somebody else. Before I get into the tips I just want to say these are my own tips and it's just what I do that help me and I know it might not be possible for some people to do these things so you can only really apply them to the situation that you're in and, and hopefully at least one of them helps some way. So anyway with all that said let's get into my top money saving tips. Number one is only buy things when you've actually saved up the money to buy it. It's so easy these days to get everything you want quickly because credit is so easy to get and social media makes us feel like we need all these things that really we don't and it's just not worth getting into debt over buying material things. It's a bit of an old-fashioned approach. In my nana and granddad's day you literally couldn't buy something if you didn't have the physical cash to buy it and that is sort of the principle I try and live by most months if I can. So if possible I would avoid using Klarna and pay back monthly schemes uh, like store credit cards, subscriptions and things like that. If you're paying for something over months and you might think it's only five ten pound a month but then you do that with four or five items and it quickly adds up per month out of your wages so that'd be my first tip number two would be to always pack your lunch and snacks so i never leave the house without taking like a drink with me and snacks in my rucksack i'm the type of person that gets peckish quite a lot so rather than being out in the car and thinking i'm starving i need to pull into this like mcdonald's or whatever to get something to eat i always have like a crisp or a cereal bar or something in my bag that i can snack on until i have my lunch at the weekend i tend to like maybe treat myself a little bit but during the week I always do make my lunches it's just so much cheaper for example now like a Costa coffee at the weekend might cost me like 12 13 14 pound or more for like a toasty a muffin a drink so it's not cheap I know people that do that nearly every day over the week over the month that is so expensive so if you can meal plan your dinners and lunches for the week and sort of make them up it will save you time and money a tip I learned a couple of years ago was to think about spending money in time if for example I spend 12 13 pound on a cost of coffee lunch that might have taken me 40 minutes of working to be able to buy that lunch so I think is it really worth me working those 40 minutes to be able to afford this lunch and then just weighing up you know the price of your time basically number three is pay for any insurances annually rather than monthly if you can so things like car insurance home and content insurance they're cheaper if you pay for them annually rather than monthly so the only thing with this is that obviously you need to have the bulk of the money there to pay for it so what I personally do is I have a pot that I save money into every month so say the insurance is 150 pound for the year I then just break the 150 pound down save whatever I need to every month so that when the next payment comes around I already have the money there in an account that I've been saving monthly for. So number four is to pay off any debts as a top priority. So if you're saving money but you also have debt on credit cards, you've got an overdraft, store card, loans, it would be far more useful for you to generally pay off your debts than saving money. Especially things like overdrafts and credit cards. If you are paying interest on them, the interest is really high. So if you can work on getting those down first and then saving money, that is probably the best bet. So my fifth tip for saving money is to track your expenses. You need to know what you're spending to be able to measure it basically. So the past couple of years I've had to be really tight with my money because I wanted to go traveling for a while, I wanted to buy a house so it meant I had to cut back on a lot of things and I literally wrote down every single thing I spent every month so I could track exactly where the money was going. Sometimes I'd look back at my account and be like I spent 30 quid in home bargains like oh, was that necessary and then I'd look back and I'd think yes it was or no I bought a candle and something else that wasn't necessary so I'll be careful again next month but it really just gives you a good insight into what it is you're actually spending like you spent 40 pound on like Starbucks maybe is that necessary no whether you do this on your phone or on paper it's just a really good way of like checking in with yourself and being a bit more careful my nana always used to say if you look after the pennies the pounds will look after themselves <laughs> 
and I heard a quote recently that said beware of little expenses because a small leak can sink a big ship yeah I just thought that's true like it seems like a little expense until you do it so many times and then it just digs and digs into your account balance so number six is to switch your mobile phone from a contract to a sim only so a couple of years ago me and my partner and um, we've always had iPhones and I think James used to pay like 60 pound a month I think at one point I was paying 45 and then every time I'd come to renew it it just go up so much and it just seemed ridiculously expensive so my last phone I think I had for like two years and the battery was actually okay because I know that is a problem with some of them I do now carry a portable charge around with me but it's absolutely fine and I pay 10 pound a month with Voxy which is like a part of Vodafone I think and I have like unlimited everything it's so good I can't believe like I used to pay 45 pound a month and I still have an iPhone the exact same thing but it's 10 pound a month yeah I don't have the latest iPhone I don't keep up with that I don't even know what phone it is I've got now but I know it doesn't cost me a lot and that makes me happy <laughs> Also, another good tip is that you can buy iPhones secondhand so much cheaper for like two, three, four hundred pound compared to buying a brand new one for like grand or whatever they are now. So I would highly recommend that and sometimes they've barely been used and then you can just put a SIM in it. So my seventh tip for saving money is to switch banks if they're offering good money to do that. I've done this numerous times. I've seen recent offers for like 200 pound or 175. In a year, you can make like 600 pound or more just by switching banks. If you're quite young, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this because it is good to build up a history with a bank when you come to a stage where you need to apply for credit or like a mortgage, things like that. It's good for them to be able to see at least maybe a year or a couple of years of banking history with them. Some of them do require you to switch direct debits and certain things like that, but a couple of them I've seen recently, you don't have to have any direct debits or you might need to pay in a certain amount, but it's definitely worth it. It's free cash. <laughs> I'd just say with some of the banks that I've used, some of the apps are a lot better than others and things like that. Number A, if you already do have savings, is to shop around and get a high paying interest account. So at the moment with the way the base rate is in England, savings accounts are decent now. So for years they've been shocking and you got nothing for your savings basically. But now a lot of the accounts are paying three, four percent. It's definitely worth, if you do have savings, having a shop around. I know quite a few older people especially who maybe aren't quite as savvy like on the internet or they don't want to move the money but just having it sat in an account that pays like half a percent when you could be getting four percent on that money is a massive difference and I personally love getting interest it's just free money every month Monzo at the moment is really good if you are quite financially comfortable and you already have like your rainy day fund if you don't need access to the money you can always fix it away you tend to get a higher interest rate if you fix it away for six months a year or even a couple of years number nine is to meal plan your lunch and dinners so this may not seem like a massive money saving tip however it definitely does save money if you kind of know what you're having sort of five days out of the week for your lunch and your dinner it stops that impulsive behavior of thinking or oh, just get uber eats or just like you know get a takeaway it also makes it a bit more healthier yeah if you meal plan you're also less likely to waste food so you know exactly what's going to be going into your recipes and non-branded products from the supermarkets are sometimes just as good as the branded ones i was going to make a video on like the branded versus non-branded that i actually prefer but often they might not be on eye level they might be like tucked at the bottom or you might not even know if you've never tried it the packaging's not as appealing but sometimes the contents are just as nice and number 10 is sort of two tips I'm going to put into one so that is to walk or cycle to places as much as you can so luckily for me a lot of the places I have worked since being like 16 I have usually been able to walk to sometimes it might take me up to an hour to walk I've been able to cycle to um, so me and my partner have always shared one car just because it just seems such a waste of money to have two cars when I feel like it's just been a bit lazy for me to not just walk or cycle there and also it's getting me exercise at the same time I appreciate if you've got kids and other things going on it isn't always possible or if you want to do a food shop on the way back and things like that but maybe at least four days out of the five things like that if you can walk to the shops rather than drive it just saves you fuel money it gets you exercise in there's a lot of bonuses to it and just alongside that is exercise for free so walking outside running YouTube videos setting up like a mini home gym there's so many things you can do instead of paying for expensive gym memberships now, I know some people are gym bunnies and you know there are things that you go to the gym for that you couldn't do at home 
However, a lot of people pay for a gym membership and barely even go. And there are things you could maybe do at home that would cost you a lot less money per month. Number 11, which is a bit annoying because I kind of wanted to keep it to 10, but I just wanted to throw this one in. I know a lot of banks now do the roundups if you've seen it on your account. So when you're paying for things on your card, that might be like 29 pound, it'll round it up to 30 and then the pound will go into a pot and save it for you. But you can do that with every purchase. So it does quickly add up. So I'll definitely turn that on if you're wanting to save a bit more and you don't necessarily want to like track every single penny that's a really good way of them sort of doing it for you so small changes over time make a massive difference and it's not just about being like tight with your money or not enjoying yourself because it's so important to enjoy your life and treat yourself every now and then but for me it's just more important to be able to reach my bigger goals I want to look back and remember what I spent my money on most of the time which is why I saved up a lot for traveling and for a house because they were my two main goals I don't want to think where did that thousand pound go like the last couple of months I've just bought like random stuff. And with May being Mental Health Awareness Month, I thought it might be a good video to film as I read recently that it, I think it was something like 87% of people's problems are caused by money and financial problems. And it can play a massive part on like anxiety and stress in your life. And there's so much we could be taught in schools to help with this. But yeah, anyway, I'll stop rambling now. I hope you enjoyed the video and a few of the tips were helpful for you. If you do like the video, I would love it if you could give it a big like and I can make more finance related videos and I will see you in my next video on Monday at 7. Thanks for watching. Bye!